of those are virtual events. So today we're talking about modernizing your Slick 500. So take uh, and uh, and your Compact Logics L32 and L35e and L4x control systems to the new control of a Compact Logics 5380, um, which is the latest. Um, but it's important to know your installed equipment base. I want to talk about that a little bit. The uh, they say less than 20% of companies, manufacturing facilities know uh, exactly what the life cycle status is of their uh, of their installed base in their facilities. Now this these equipment have been running for a very long time and they will continue to run. And the reason that you would migrate them doesn't necessarily mean that they will quit running. It, the reason you would migrate them is that uh, is for productivity reasons, uh, to gain diagnostics and to understand uh, what, is, uh, uh, what is going on with your process rather than have something break and then scratch your head and try to figure out why it's not running anymore. Uh, it'd be nice to get diagnostics and get information, get productivity information, uh, be able to change parameters on the fly over ethernet and those sorts of things. So um, I would encourage everybody to visit the RA product lifecycle uh, status webpage, uh, look through your equipment. If you have any questions on the lifecycle status of that equipment, you can visit this web page and put the catalog number into uh, the web page, and it'll tell you where we are on the life cycle for that product. So here we'll talk about life cycle and longevity uh, next. So there are several uh, Rockwell Automation classifies the life cycle uh, status. Life cycle status is active or active and mature, or end of life, or discontinued. So you can see that the Compact Logix 5380 and 5370 is currently considered active products. Those are our newest product lines. Uh, the 5370 came out in, in roughly 2012, and the 5380 came out roughly in 2018. So those are our newest Compact Logix product lines. Uh, you can see the SLC 503 that, that has been around, you know, since 1990 um, or before is uh, uh, we still have about five years on that product left. Uh, so it's it's been around for 20, nearly 30 years. And uh, uh, so we got... They're, they're estimating that we have about five years on that product. So that'll take us up to the year uh, 2025 uh, before that even begins to enter end of life. So, th so the SLC products, although some of them has been retired, you can look to the right and see that uh, the SLC 501 and 502 and, and 531 has been discontinued. Uh, uh, the SLC 503, 504, and 505 will be with us, you know, for the next five years anyway, and then they'll enter into end of life, and they'll have 12 to 24 months there, and then they'll be discontinued. You know, I would estimate by, certainly by the year 2030 that the SLC products would be discontinued after uh, 40 years uh, in service. Now, being discontinued means that you cannot buy a new one. Uh, if you have one in 2030 that dies, we will probably be able to get you a remanufactured one and have it on your doorstep the next morning through our repair exchange services. Uh, so th that's the life cycle. Uh, that's how we determine the life cycle. Active, active, mature, end of life and discontinued. Uh, you can see that the Compact Logix L32e and L35e are at the end of life. So they'll be discontinued, uh, they estimate, in December of 2020. 
uh, and the L43, L45 will be discontinued in the next uh, couple of months. So we have the, uh, uh, the SLC control platform longevity. Uh, as I was saying, the, the SLCs of 532, 533, 504s, 505s uh, will be available for us for the foreseeable future. But we would not deploy any of these into a new application. We would want to deploy these um, in a, in a uh, uh, you know, just from a, from a standpoint of, of I need to replace a product uh, is how this would be, uh, how these would be sold. Uh, there, it would make no sense to deploy an SLC in a new application today. There is a wide assortment of the 5380 controllers um, to fit any application that the Slick 505s or any of the compact logics. These are 5380s are very capable controllers. Uh, so there is a, uh, uh, there's a wide assortment of them. Uh, they will more than handle anything that an SLC can handle. Uh, as I was saying, the, uh, the L32E and the L35E will be discontinued uh, at the end of this year. And the, uh, the L43 and the L45 controllers will uh, be discontinued in the next few months. Uh, the 5380 controller is a very high performance controller. It's a, uh, a quad core processor in it, so it is truly multitasking. Uh, it has a very big strength on, on uh, handling motion applications. <clears throat> a lot of the motion applications today uh, tune on the fly, so if we change the payload on the motion, uh, it'll tune uh, in situ in the process. Uh, so it's a very capable processor. Um, it's got two Ethernet ports. It'll you can segregate those Ethernet ports onto two different IP networks, or you can uh, use them in a, in a device level ring or resilient topologies. Um, Onboard uh, uh, diagnostics and the security on the 5380 is uh, is. Uh, is very much improved. It's got encrypted software. Security of manufacturing is very big right now, especially in a lot of applications such as pharma, where we absolutely positively have to know that the program running in the processor is, uh, and the firmware running in the processor is the correct program and the correct uh, firmware. Uh, here's a lineup of the 5380 controllers. Uh, they run from 0.6 megabytes of memory to 10 megabytes of memory, which is, uh, I think memory is, is overstated. Uh, you can do a tremendous amount of, of uh, processing with uh, 0.6 megabytes of memory. Uh, and it'll handle a, a, a fairly large application. But there are, you know, certainly it'll go up to 10 megabytes if you're, uh, if you're really pushing it. Uh, we now, look at ethernet nodes as a, as a way to connect IO to the processor. In the past, we would look at connections, but today we look at ethernet nodes. So if you look at the bottom one, the L3100 ERM, it shows that it'll handle 180 ethernet nodes, okay? That would be 180 PowerFlex VFDs on ethernet. Um, which uh, we would we would really look at integrated architecture builder and look at the utilization on the network and so forth if we were going to get into that type of application. But the 5380s are, are very, uh, very capable. Next slide. Well, here we're talking about the uh, how to migrate the L32 and L35E compact logics to the 5380. Uh, one way to do it would be that you would just simply, um, 
you would just simply uh, rip and replace. And so we would just take the uh, the fifth uh, the L32 or L35E uh, uh, off of the rack and and put an uh, 5380 with the compact 5000 IO on it onto the uh, into the application. But we can also um, retain the 1769 IO. 1769 IO will be with us for a very long time. So uh, in this scenario that's being shown, we would take the, uh, the Compact Logix 5380 and we would replace the, uh, the Compact Logix L35E or L32E. And uh, we would put the 1769 IO onto uh, an adapter, an ethernet adapter, a 1769 AEMTR. So when we do this, we're retaining all of the field wiring and we're retaining the 1769 IO, the expense of uh, replacing that. Uh, likewise with the L4X uh, processor, one way to do it would be to rip and replace with the 5380 and the compact 5000 IO. But uh, here we're retaining the 1769 IO that was used on the L4X. Uh, neither, uh, let's see, the 5380 does not have a serial port on it. So if you absolutely positively have to have a serial port, uh, we have the 5069 serial. Uh, so in this case, we would add the 5380 and the 5069 uh, serial uh, IO module and then we would apply the AEMTR, 1769 AEMTR uh, ethernet adapter and retain the 1769 IO. So all the field wiring and everything would be retained. Uh, you would just uh, uh, take out the, uh, the L4X processor and put in the 1769 adapter. Likewise with the SLC, uh, hardware migration uh, to the 5380. It's similar. We have a product that's called the 1747 AEMTR. And so we would pull the processor, uh, the SLC processor, out of the slick rack, and then we could retain the slick IO and all of the field wiring uh, that is associated with the slick IO. Um, of course, the other way to do it is to rip and replace. And in this case, we would just uh, we would just take the SLC and trans and uh, move that I/O over to Compact uh, Logix 5380 with Compact 5000 I/O, and uh, just uh, what we call a rip and replace. Uh, the 1747 AENTR module would be used for the phase migration. Uh, we would. Uh, take out the slick processor and puts the 1747 AENTR module in place. Um, and then if you have to have a serial port, then we would use the 5069 serial module uh, with the 5380 processor uh, to, to uh, obtain the serial port on the 5380 system. Uh, the modernization tools, the integrated architecture builder. If you guys are not using integrated architecture builder yet, I highly advise that you do this whenever uh, it's free download. Uh, just Google download integrated architecture builder and, uh, and you'll get a download link. Um, and in integrated architecture builder, uh, among many other things, is a migration wizard. So the migration wizard takes you from the, uh, uh, the SLC system to the Compact Logix 5380 system. What you do is you go into the migration wizard and you just tell it that uh, you have an SLC system. You, uh, you tell it if you want to retain your SLC IO or if you want to uh, migrate your SLC IO over to Compact 5000 IO. And, uh, uh, and you just bring up the, uh, that and it'll produce, a, it'll produce a bill of material for you. And then you can quickly understand maybe 
constraints you may run into by doing this, or, uh, and you'll also understand the, uh, uh, the relative cost of, uh, of the conversion. Um, another modernization tool is a 1492 IO wiring system. What this enables you to do is like rip and replace the SLC system completely. So in this scenario, you would, you would take the SLC IO, you would unscrew the, the removable terminal blocks from the front of that IO, and then you would take the SLC processor, rack, power supply, and IO out of the cabinet, and you would install a 1492 IO wiring system. What this does is it retains all of your field IO wiring. And this is in Integrated Architecture Builder. So uh, in the Migration Wizard, it's got a checkbox. You just check it off and it takes into consideration that you are going uh, to use the 1492 uh, IO wiring system. Uh, this is a very fast way of changing out an SLC system. Uh, here is a chart of all of the IO uh, wiring system, uh, the, the wiring systems, the, uh, the, uh, the control modules, the, the backplane hardware, everything uh, is taken into consideration in Integrated Architecture Builder. Uh, when you run it through the migration wizard. Uh, so the 1492 IO uh, wiring system is uh, composed of the, uh, it's a conversion system. It, uh, you would choose the conversion system based upon what size SLC slot uh, rack you're running at this moment. And uh, uh, you can see in the far right hand picture, the, uh, the SLC IO, uh, the RTBs are retained and uh, put into the control modules. And then the uh, 1492 wiring system connects directly to those uh, 1746 removable terminal blocks and then runs up to the uh, Compact 5000 IO. So the wiring on this is very quick. And, uh, and there's a certain level of integrity in that wiring too. Uh, so uh, it's, it's field modifications can be made literally in hours. Uh, consists of the upper mounting plate, the lower mounting plate, uh, and then the uh, conversion modules and some end anchors. Here you, uh, you remove the, term, the 1746 removable terminal block. Um, and then once you've removed all those terminal blocks, then you just remove the entire SLC chassis uh, from the uh, panel. And you install the lower mounting plate of the, 17, uh, the 1492 hour wiring system. And you attach the ground to it. In step four, this goes very quickly in, uh, in actual conversion. Uh, then step five, you uh, snap in the conversion modules. Uh, step six, uh, you attach the uh, 17, uh, or the step seven, you connect the, uh, the 1746 uh, RTBs, the field wiring to the uh, conversion modules. And then step eight, you put the mounting plate over the top of that. Uh, then step nine and 10, uh, you mount that top plate. Uh, step at 11, you mount the Compact Logix 5380 on, onto that top plate. And then step 12, uh, you plug the uh, conversion module wiring system into your compact 5000 IO. Um, another tool for the migration is built into RS Logix 5000 version 12. 
So the uh, code conversion to move from an SLC to a compact logics is built into RS Logics 500 version 12. Um, in that conversion, you, in, you're in RS Logics 500 and you save the program as, you save the RS Logics 500 application, choose save as, and um, you save it as uh, an ACD file. And then you click save, and then a wizard will come up and it'll ask you some questions about it. Um, one of it will, which compact logics do you want to migrate to? Uh, you want to migrate to the, uh, uh, to the 5370 or the 5380. And uh, then step four, it'll ask you specifically which processor catalog number and revision do you plan to use for that migration and step forward. So there's a few questions that, uh, that it'll ask you. It'll ask you if you want to keep the existing IO or if you want to change all the IO out to, uh, uh, to uh, Compact 5000 IO. In this case, they're choosing to keep the existing uh, 1746 IO, which means it's going to install a 1747 uh, AENTR Ethernet adapter into the select rack. Um, once the migration is complete, then uh, you can look at a comparison of the uh, Logix files between what you started with and what you ended up with, and you can compare the uh, Slick I.O. With, uh, with what you ended up with. Um, in this, step 5B is step 6B. It's the same thing. Uh, step 5B, though, is the case of updating all the I.O. to uh, to Compact 5000 I.O. And you can see here that it chose the 1746 IB16, and then you have a pull down on the right hand side of every, uh, of all the I.O. modules that could be used in that migration. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, migration guides, uh, topics, that are available um, in the uh, Rockwell Automation Documents Center. Uh, please be, feel free to engage us and, and we will help you through this. We'll uh, consult with you on your application and we'll determine the best path forward and provide the literature uh, for this. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to call us or uh, email us and uh, we will get you answers as quickly as possible. Thank you very much for attending the, uh, uh, the Tech Talk today. It looks like it took us about 30 minutes, so we're right on schedule. And uh, you guys have a very good day. Thank you.